Today we're going to take a closer look at Lehman Russ, the Primark for the Space Wolves. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. All right, welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here again with you today with the man, the myth, the legend himself, Lehman Russ, <laughs> the Primarch of the Space Wolves. This is, I guess I would say, next to Sanguinius, maybe one of the most anticipated Primarch releases ever, I would guess. Um, he is extremely popular and a very cool looking miniature and rumored to be part of like kind of a dual scene that we saw with Fulgrim versus Ferris Manus, but in a similar fashion against hopefully Magnus when they come out with his, I guess, uh, mortal uh, <laughs> or as close to mortal as you can be, I guess, metahuman uh, Primark miniature from Forge Roll. So, Brand, brand new release. I mean, we've seen it rumored. It finally came out. We got it here in the States, and here he is right here. Now, this guy is 70 pounds uh, from Forge World, which, you know, depending on which way the wind's blowing on the exchange market, you know, gets you to right around 80 bucks US, uh, depending on when you're actually watching uh, this video. Now, they used to be as much as like almost $100, uh, but that's come down quite a bit in, uh, in recent times here with the world economics and all sorts of different things. So once you open the box, it is a thicker box. It's not one of the smaller Primark miniatures. You'll notice that it has the placard card thing right here. And on the back, it also has the instructions, uh, the assembly instructions, which we first saw with Corax, uh, which was really cool to see because a lot of times you're like super puzzled, especially with these uh, the resin bases, the super display bases right here, like exactly how they go together. So keeping that in mind, uh, it definitely helped out while I was looking at it. and I'm, I uh, actually already forgot how it goes, all goes together. But so we'll walk through it again. So then it's got the two compartments of bits or components and then a little uh, working with a uh, forge rolled resin guide here as as well as a check checker number. And I think the batch code is on yeah, right here. It's on the back of the uh, the thing, the uh, um, UPC label right there, right? So as far as the model itself goes, it, it's like I said, it's a it's a big one. You got the big ass display base right here. And then of course you got the model itself, which is almost a 54 millimeter scale miniature in and of itself. So let's take a look at the base first off. This thing is ginormous and it features parts of like uh, Prospero kind of Rooney uh, kind of things like pyramids and all that stuff that you would expect to see on Prospero while the, you know, the Space Wolves were there raising it to the ground, burning it so to speak. So there's your two big chunks which represent the pieces that go over top of the 60 mil base and the 40 mil base. And then you've got uh, some little chunks, secondary chunks if you will, that go on top of that whole diorama kind of system type thing. So first off, I mean the styling is, is impeccable. I, I, I like this one. Uh, it's a little different from what we've seen in the past with a lot of like uh, vertical kind of uh, supports and, and things like that, you know, with like uh, the Night Haunter or uh, Corvus or uh, Cor Corvus Corax, but I still like it in and of itself. So it, it basically, of course, is on Prospera. There you can see a Thousand Suns Legion. There's some little Imperial Aquilas with like lines drawn through them and the, and the ruins down here. And of course, a, uh, a helmet here, a Mark IV a helmet, because we know um, Mark IV is one of the one of the plastics. Actually, I think that's a thousand sun helmet right there. That's actually a Mark III. Pardon my French or mistake, whichever whichever you wanna, whatever the same may be in your particular area there. Okay, so then of course you got these little ruined pyramid uh, spire kind of things. So basically, how this goes together, if the sprue gates weren't there, is you put this on the 60 mil, and then the little 40 mil goes in here. 
and then your display, your uh, basically play base, which if you don't glue this piece down, which locks it all into place, you can separate this out with Lehman Russ on it to play with them uh, in game. But then, you know, to keep it on your shelf or whatever, you have this big uh, awesome assembly right here. So let's concentrate more on that. So basically this goes here uh, and then you've got these two little doodad pieces that also attach to it. Now here is basically how it looks when it's all assembled. So these kind of stick up, of course, and uh, with the piece uh, laying down here. So I believe it's right, looks to me about like that on that one there. And then this one attaches to the, um, the side right here where you can see that little divot. Very cool looking stuff here. Like I said, that is some of the best part of the miniature is putting a little diorama together and separating it out and playing around with it. Now for the actual model, which is fantastically sculpted. I mean, I was I was ooning on over this thing. I was like, man, it's everything. I mean, it's just so good. It's just like the artwork. And I love the pose, the posing. Like every time I see this pose, I think of Achilles in that movie Troy with Brad Pitt, of course. And as he's, you know, the, the, the beginning of the movie where the two armies are coming up and they call out the champions to decide the battle and they're yelling for Achilles and, you know, he's coming out and the, 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 the kid that comes to get him, you know, is like, I've never seen a man that big. And he's like, he's like, I'd never fight him. And Achilles is like, and that's why no one will remember your name. And, and then he goes on to fight him, of course, takes him out. But he's doing that little stance as he like runs up, right, towards um, uh, the Agamemnon. Nah, I wasn't Agamemnon's guy. I forget the the king, the particular king he was conquering, or army, or region of, of Greece, or um, uh, Macedonia that that they were conquering them. But that guy was like obviously big, and he was dodging and he gets a the spear thrown in. I mean, he's doing this whole like like dynamic pose, and that's what I depict this, as, especially with ha him having a shield. Like it's just it really screams at me like Achilles you know, that whole battle scene, which I thought was pretty neat, just for me, because I really enjoyed that movie. If you haven't seen the director's cut of it, it's definitely worth uh, checking out as well. Very, very good movie. Uh, lots of stars in that one, of course. Now, here's the actual model, which uh, already you can tell he's very dynamic, definitely crouching down, not his full height, but hey, always beware of, uh, of, uh, of a wolf when it's uh, cornered, right? And then there's the other leg there that he's basically has behind him, you know, springboarding off of. Then you've got his shoulder pads, which are incredibly detailed. I mean, look at all of the cuts, the, the gnarlings in here, the, the little tassels, the, the wolf emblem, all the studs, all of the little wolf pelts themselves and wolf talismans and everything just in here. It's just very impeccable. And then you've got the double, double wolf backpack right here. I don't know if that's to represent, I don't know if that's what he had. I forget the actual art on um, the book covers. I don't know if that's something he had. And then of course you've got the rest of the, uh, what is this here? This is some more wolf pelts and details and things right there. Then he got his cape, which again is amazingly detailed. I mean, look at this thing here. It's it's very well done. It's all slanted to the right side. It's in the right direction because this is animal fur, of course. Um, you know, it's got all the talismans, the pelts, all sorts of things in there. Then you get to his actual head, which was kind of a teaser in and of itself because they showed us with, with the wrong head there uh, at the beginning of the year at the Horse Heresy Weekender, which they just announced the new Weekender will be again, of course, uh, the first, I think it's the first weekend of February in 2017. So hopefully, who knows what Primark still uh, reveal at that one. So there's his head, which, <laughs> I mean, if you size this guy up to a normal Iron Warrior, uh, the head is almost as big as his torso right there. So incredible styling, incredible scale. Obviously these are the Billy Badasses of the 40K universe. Then he gets some more uh, ribbons, some tassels, some different things right there. And then he gets into his actual weapons, of course. So he's got the Axe of Hellwinter, which I, I think he re it just really reminds me of like He-Man with this thing. And uh, obviously that sword right there just screams, you know, um, the He-Man sword, of course. Uh, let's see, Sword of Grayskull or whatever it is. I mean, it's just really dope looking. It almost looks like Abaddon's Demon Sword. Almost, the Demon Sword Drakian. And then you've got a shield and another random wolf pelt that goes on his uh, back there. And then, of course, his combat knife and his personal sidearm as well right there. Again, very well styled, amazingly styled, um, amazingly sculpted detailed i mean everything down to a t is done really well here now this model again 
Uh, we haven't seen all the Primarchs, and it's probably the most one of the most anticipated ones out there. Now, as far as rules go, uh, Forge World gave us some, what well, they call them, the uh, the get you by Rust rules, because we know that in Book 7, Inferno is coming out at some point. It may be revealed at the Weekender, or the 40k Open, which will be happening at Warhammer World uh, November 4th and 5th, I believe. This particular get you by rule set, which may or may not be the same as what they carry over um, to the actual book itself, um, he's, four, he's 400 points. He comes with the normal Primarch rules, which give you independent character, eternal warrior, fear, adamantite will, fleet, fearless, it will not die, master of legion, precision shots, and precision strikes, which very good thing to have because you can place uh, a lot of those hits that you do. Now, the master of legion special rule is, of course, indicative to games in the age of darkness rule set 30k that gives you specific abilities lets you take command squads gives you rights of war generally you can check them all out they're under uh legion praetor section in most of the books i think even the red books that's where they are so you basically pick one now i'm not sure what you would pick for this particular one because i mean you you get generic ones you can pick obviously there isn't a space wolf one yet but I imagine in time there will be, but they're kind of holding that, that particular rule set back. Uh, his armor gives a two up armor save with a four up and vulnerable. Again, standard Primarch issue. His axe, the axe of Hellwinter, counts as a power axe. Great, great stuff there. Uh, the sword of Bale Knight counts as a paragon blade, which uh, if you follow 30k, well, you know that is a pretty badass AP2 weapon, so you can choose to swing with the axe or the sword because remember, the axe is still unwieldy. He is not relentless. Um, It'd be cool if he was, but he's not. The Scorn Splitter uh, counts as a combi bolter, which is personal firearm. Um, and he has special rule Sire of the Space Wolves, which counts as a Legion of Vexilla. He personally counts as the Legion of Vexilla. And the Breaker of Shields, Bringer of Ruin, confers the Crusader and counterattack special rules. Crusader, uh, of course, being you get an extra dice to your run and you get to pick the highest. And counterattack, well, I think everybody pretty much knows what that is. And most space wolves come with it already, so that kind of makes sense right there. Uh, he has a pretty good stat line, you know, weapon skill 9, ballistic skill 6, strength 6, toughness 6, wounds 6, in initiative 7, attack 6, leadership 10, and a 2-up save. For 400 points, he is pretty pretty beefy, pretty badass right there. Obviously, he's not going to be casting psychic powers or, you know, doing other special abilities that some of his other brother Primarchs do, but he's still really good on the tabletop and definitely a blender. Um, probably not as much of a blender compared to what Sanguinius will be, but he's still a badass in his own right. So this is a great looking model. It's not that many components as you can see here on the, the exploded view that comes on the back, of course, of the little uh, placard card that we already talked about here. Um, I think it's great. I think it's a great model. Uh, Forge World really knocked this one out of the park. I can't wait to see what they do with the rest of Primarchs out there because they are so much, so iconic, so much part of this game that it's, uh, you know, it's really cool when they come out. It's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big thing. And now that we're seeing plastic ones coming out for 40k, that makes it even crazier and even more excitement. So very exciting times this holiday season, indeed. Uh, questions, clarifications on missions. If I left anything out or made any mistakes, please leave it in the comments below. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.